Hi folks, if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, my name's Lindsay and I make fly fishing and fly tying videos. This week we're going to take a deep dive into targeting one of my favourite species, the grayling. So without further ado, let's get into it. There are many places and rivers where you can target these fish, but today I am on Broadlands Estate and the iconic River Test. Home to the Mountbatten family and famous the world over for its chalk stream trout fishing. The grayling, scientifically known as Thamalus Thamalus, better known in this part of the world as the Lady of the Stream. A freshwater fish found primarily in Europe and parts of Asia. Known for its striking appearance, the grayling features a slender, elongated body that can reach lengths of up to 60 centimetres. Its coloration is quite distinctive, typically showcasing a mix of grey, silver and sometimes iridescent hues which can vary based on its habitat. One of the most notable characteristics of the grayling is its large dorsal fin, which is often adorned with vibrant colours and patterns, resembling a sail when fully extended. This feature not only adds to its beauty, but also aids in stability while swimming. Grayling are usually found in clear and cold rivers and streams, with gravel or rocky bottoms, where they prefer to inhabit riffles and runs. They are opportunistic feeders, primarily consuming insects, crustaceans and small fish. Their presence is often considered an indicator of good water quality. In terms of behaviour, grayling are known to be quite wary and can be shy, often requiring stealth and skill to catch. They spawn in spring, typically in areas with clean flowing water, where females lay eggs on the gravel substrate Overall, the grayling is not only a fascinating fish due to its unique appearance and behaviour, but it also plays an important role in the ecosystems of freshwater habitats. There was a time in the UK in particular that grayling were seen as a pest due to the misconception that they hampered the stocks of wild trout and would compete for food and territory. Thankfully, times have changed and the once much maligned species is today held in very high regard and actively targeted by anglers. These fish make a great target for the fly angler. Outside of the river trout fishing season, grayling can be targeted here in England from the 16th of June up until the 14th of March, when they are typically well into spawning. Please check your local regulations before going fishing. Let's talk a little about the tackle and different methods you can use to target these fish. In this section then we're going to have a little look at the tackle and the tactics that we're going to use to approach catching grayling here on the river test. Primarily, my first approach of attack will be this rod. It's a 10 foot 6 Jensen igniter for a three weight. It's a very soft action rod. Now, with that, I've coupled it with a GMC automatic reel. This is a relatively new setup for me. I've only been using it this year. I'm really enjoying using the system. And basically what I've got, I've got a nymphing fly line on here. I've taken off the manufactured loop and I've attached a small O-ring to the fly line itself. And from the fly line, now, I've basically got about 30 feet of this pink and yellow indicator tippet. It's at six pound, so I'll get very little sag in the line when I'm, when I'm nymphing it. It works a treat. And what I've done towards the end of the line, I've cut a little bit off and just tied a tag in. I don't know how well you'll see um, the tags there. I haven't coloured them up or that yet, but they stand out really well as an indication for fishing and you can see the rod bobbling about there, it is very soft. To this, I'll attach about six foot of tippet and I'll have my flies around two and a half feet apart. On the point, I've got the heavier fly and above it, I've got a lighter fly. So that's my double nymphing setup, more or less. I'll go into it in more detail, perhaps in another video that we're talking about euro nymphing. 
but let's put that to the side. Now, the second rod I'll be using is, uh, it's an eight foot six four weight rod. It's from Witchwood, it's their flow rod. And basically what this does, it, it does a number of jobs for me. It is the dry fly rod when required, although during practice in the week here, I've not had much joy with dry fly. It also works as a dual rod, but what I've got it set up for at the moment and what you'll see is a, a bung, basically. I've rigged this up for the bung. I'm fishing two flies off the back of it. One's a, quite a heavy nymph and then there's a smaller nymph above it. And earlier in the week, the river was really high and to get to certain parts of it, the bung's probably the best tactic for that. I don't wish to dwell too long on the individual techniques for targeting grayling, as they will keep for future videos. I do want to give you a brief overview of the tactics available to you. My primary method for this species is nymphing, and there are many varieties of this method. For the purpose of this video, we will give this the umbrella term of Euronymphing. As I have said, there are several different nymphing techniques for targeting grayling. You have to find what works best for you. With most of the Greylings diet being either on or just off the bottom, this is the go-to choice for many anglers. Whatever nymphing technique you wish to utilise, it's about getting your flies down but allowing them to travel at the same speed as the river current. Presenting a natural drift and mimicking their food source. Numbers of flies can vary from a single fly up to three flies. I often fish two nymphs on my cast. Usually with the heaviest fly on the point, but this can change when the situation requires. An example of this would be if I want to get a much smaller fly down to the riverbed quickly. The faster sinking fly would then move to my top dropper. Various methods of bite indication can be used from simply watching your braided loop at the end of your fly line to shop bought inline indicator solutions. Let's briefly touch on dry fly fishing. Despite the grayling having a mouth that is more suited to bottom feeding, in the right conditions they are more than happy to come and claim a dry fly. Hatches can be sparse in the colder months, so be observant to what is happening on the water. You may only get a short window to take advantage of a hatch. This is one of the reasons that I carry two rods. One of the key things when targeting grayling on the dry is your strike needs to be a little quicker than that used for trout. Grayling will very quickly spit a fly back out that doesn't quite feel as it should. The duo technique. This is a great method for searching out grayling and targeting small shoals while sight fishing. It allows the fly to be presented at a greater distance than the Euronymphing technique allows. Duo, also known as dry dropper, can be extremely effective. I did make a video dedicated to the dry dropper method and I will link it in the top right hand corner of your screen. If you want to come back to it after this video, I think it is worth your time to get a more in-depth understanding of the method. Guys, I would like to pause for just a second to ask that if you are getting value from the video to please leave it a thumbs up and to consider subscribing to the channel. That small click from you really helps to push the video out to a wider audience. I would really appreciate your support with this. That said, let's jump straight back in. Choosing the right flies can make all the difference when fishing for grayling. They will take many of the same flies that you use for your trout fishing. That said, there is one fly that is irresistible to the grayling, and although it is a marmite pattern, its effectiveness cannot be overstated. The squirmy worm works especially well when the river is high and coloured, which it is much of the time during the autumn and winter months. They are not the only flies that work. Here are a few of my favourite bugs for grayling fishing. As for dry flies, my selection is much smaller at this time of year 
as the opportunity to use them is limited. Here are a few of my go-to patterns when fishing dries. We have discussed the various methods and looked at some options for fly choice. Our next concern is fish location. Typically, in the warmer months, you will find fish in the quicker stretches where oxygen and a steady conveyor belt of food is plentiful. At this time of year though, the fish will be looking to start shoaling up and can often be found in the slower, walking paced water. You can find these fish tight into the margins and it always pays to put a fly in a spot before you place your feet there. Don't just charge up and jump straight into the river. Take the time to have a look around. You are looking for an entry point if you intend to wade that will cause the least disturbance to the water. When you are in slow stretches of the river, be careful of your movement. Look at the surface of the water. Are you making a bow wave? This might well spook fish. Make slow and steady movements to get into the right position. The sun is lower in the sky at this time of year. Are you casting a shadow across the water you intend to fish? When you are lucky enough to get clear water conditions, look to those areas between the ranunculus that has gravel. Grayling are extremely well camouflaged and can be difficult to spot. Watch for sudden movement beneath the water. This could well indicate feeding fish. Often, where there is one grayling, there are many. You will have to ascertain which of the three methods we have discussed previously is going to be appropriate for the water you are in. Section 5. Tips and Tricks Here are a few quick tips. Number 1. Not so much a hint or tip and I tell you this from personal experience. Always bring a dry bag. My dry bag has a complete change of dry clothing and a towel at this time of year, even when it is mild, if you fall in the river and get completely soaked, you will get cold very quickly. If you have brought a dry bag, no problem. If you haven't, it's home for an early bath. Number two, the days are short. Make the most of your day by being at the venue for first light. It might take a while for the fish to warm up, but you will be ready when it does. Number three, don't be lazy. Set up two fly rods if you have them. I typically double up my dry fly rod, which can be used for both dry and duo fishing. Number four, grilling can be very forgiving. If you are patient and change through your fly patterns often, you will increase your chances of catching a fish. Your first cast after a fly change is very often your best chance. Number 5 Last but not least, experiment with your setup. One size does not fit all. I have shown you in this video how I set my kit up. I am always looking to improve and you should too. If I am shown a better way, I will always give it some consideration. If you have gotten this far in the video, thank you for sticking with it. If you disagree with the points I have made, please let me know in the comment section below. That said, trust me on the dry bag. Fishing for grayling is not for everyone. Conditions are often unfavourable. Wet, windy and cold. The rivers are very often not at their best, high and carrying colour. If you are like me though and just have to get out, make sure you have the right clothing, good base layers and quality waders and boots. A wading staff can also be helpful if you don't know the river well. Thanks for watching and why not check out this video here to see how I set up and fish the dry dropper.